Hello everyone. Today we are going to start with a new topic and we will learn how to make shell scripts. So in today's lecture we are going to start by creating a very simple shell script and then we are going to make use of the variables. Now what is a shell script? So far we have learned a lot of commands. Now what if we want to run a combination of commands let us suppose every day in the morning. So what you have to do is you have to manually run all those commands one by one individually. So let's suppose that combination is of 10 commands. So you have to run those 10 commands manually on each day. What if you can make them or club them into a script and run that script automatically by using the cron tab option. Or even if you want to run them manually, you can club them into a script and you can run that script once daily or whenever you want to do it. So in that case what happens is we can even apply certain logics which we cannot otherwise apply on the commands. For example we can make use of certain conditions or we can run the command in a loop. So all those things can be done if we can put up those set of commands with certain logics into a script and the script is called a shell script. So shell script is nothing but it's a sequence of commands that are written in a file. Now what are the steps to write a shell script? So very first thing is we need to make a file. Now giving an extension to the file is optional. You can give the extension or you may not want to give any extension. Then you write in the code whatever you want and then finally save it and make the script executable. This is an important point that you need to make the script executable. And finally you run that script and the output will be displayed on the screen or whatever wherever you want to redirect it. So let's see how this works. So let us start by creating a file. So let's suppose that the file name is shell.sh. So again I will stress that giving the Extension is optional. This time I am giving it and in further question I will also show you that it is going to work even if I don't give any extension. So now what I want is I want to display let us suppose the date. So today's date is then what I want is to display the date. Next let us suppose I want to show the calendar also. The calendar is so here you can see that I am using the commands that we have learned. So we have learned the echo command, we have learned the date command, we have done the cal command. So I'm just combining them into one script called the shell script. So once you're done, just save this. Now make this file executable by using the chmod command. Give the execute permission to the user on the file shell.sh. And now you use dot slash shell dot sh. So this is how you run a script and you can see here today's date is you get the date and then the calendar is it displays the calendar. So this is a simplest script that you can make in a similar fashion whatever you want to achieve just write those command in a file make it executable and run it by using dot slash and then the file name. Now one important thing if you search anywhere on the net or even if you go through certain books you will find the very first line to be something like this hash exclamation mark bin bash so this is called the shebang line this is nothing but just telling that which interpreter you are going to use so this is explicitly telling the system for Perl, you will use a Perl interpreter for python you will use a python interpreter and so on okay so again, even if you don't use it, it's going to work. If you use it, then also it is going to give the same output because by default, it is going to pick bin bash as the interpreter. So even if I run it now, I'm going to get the same output. All right. Now, the next thing is how to use variables. Now, what is a variable? A variable is nothing but just a label. It's something that can store a value. For example, if you want to add two numbers, you can simply add 3 plus 5. 
but you know that the numbers are going to vary. Let's suppose you are going to give this option to certain user to enter two numbers. Now, depending upon the user, the numbers will dif differ. Someone might want to add 3 and 5, someone might want to add 13 and 15. So, how you are going to store that into a standard thing? As a programmer, you don't know what the user is going to enter. So, what you can do is you can take two variables A and B. Whatever the user enters as the first number can be stored in the variable A and the second number can be stored in the variable B. So, it will not matter what the input number is. You are simply going to add the variables A and B. Whatever value is stored inside them will get automatically summed up. So, we can declare variables simply by giving any name. Use the equal to sign and assign a value if you want. The important point to remember here is that the equal to sign, there is no space either on the left hand side or on the right hand side of the equal to. So, if you see carefully, VAR no space equal to no space 20. By this, the VAR variable will get a value 20. So, don't give any space if you want to explicitly assign a value to the variable. So, let us create a script called VAR. Here I am going to show you the use of variables. So, let's suppose I declare a variable name and assign it a value student. Another variable age, give it a value 23. Another variable income and the value is 2002.3. Let's suppose. So, you can see here if you have done any other programming language, so you might get confused that I am not assigning any data type to the variables. This is not required in shell scripting. You simply need to give the name and assign a value. Depending upon whatever is the value, the system is going to interpret it accordingly. Because you don't need to worry about the data types. Now, echo value of not value the name of student is so what is the name the name is stored in the name variable so if you want to print the value within the variable you need to use the dollar sign so you will write dollar and then the name similarly student age is dollar page and student income is dollar income. Save this, change the permission to executable for variable script dot slash var and you can see here name of the student is student, student age is 23, student income is 2002.3. So, the important point to remember is you need not to give any data types. Simply use the variable name, assign it a value and then print it using the dollar sign. Now, let us create another script var1. So, the previous script was very simple where you yourself are assigning the value to the variables within the script. So, not very useful. What you want is to leave it to the end user to enter a value. So, in that case, we need to use another variable or another command called read. So, let us suppose you want the user to enter the value or the name of the student. Okay, so, what you can write is enter the student name. Now, you will use read and give the variable name. So, let us suppose the variable name is name. So, now whatever name the user types gets stored into the variable called name. So, read is used to take the input from the user. Similarly, if you want to take the age also, so enter the age, save it in another variable called age and then you can print them student name is remember dollar then name and student age is 
डॉलर एच चेंज दी परमिशन दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू रिमेंबर वेरिएबल वन डॉट स्लैश वी आर वन सो नाउ इट इज आस्किंग to enter the name so let's suppose the name is this and the age is this so now you can see student name is and student age whatever is given by the end user now the next important thing to remember is the use of quotes so you within the script you can either use double quotes or you can use single quotes the difference is that whenever you use single quotes whatever you have written within the quotes will be printed as such so if you have noticed earlier that within the double quotes i have written dollar and then the variable name so like dollar name so how it was interpreted is dollar means that you are going to print the value of the variable not name but the value within the variable but what if you want to print dollar name as such you want to print on the screen dollar name and there is a name variable also then how you will do it in that case you can use single quotes so i'll show you the difference now so let's suppose we write it quotes dot sh so let's declare a variable name and let's assign it a value student age assign it a value now echo double quotes the name stored in now what i want is i want to print dollar name okay this i want as such the name stored in dollar name is what dollar name now this time i want to print the value so how to differentiate this so even if you do like this it will not work but if i print the same thing so i'm using the shortcuts to copy and paste here i use single quotes okay so once i have used double quotes second time i have used single quotes and you will see the difference compile this change the permissions first quotes dot sh quotes dot sh now you see here the difference the name stored in student because within double quotes the special meaning of dollar is been interpreted which means that you print the value of the variable so this name stored in student is student so i am not able to print dollar name whereas in single quotes the name stored in dollar name is and then i have put dollar name outside the single quotes so what you will write within the single quotes it will be printed as such and there will be no special interpretation of the special meanings okay so this is the difference between the use of double quotes and single quotes so that was all about creating a shell script and using variables in the next video we are going to cover up positional parameters